what's up everybody it's your girl jojo and i'm coming to you with a review for braxton family values the season finale this is the second half of the ayana fix my life episode y'all pray with me because it's early in the morning and y'all know when it's early all of this is a mess so i'm trying to get this get through this review the best i can so y'all just keep me in your thoughts um, the episode picked up where it left off last week with Ayanla leaving. She said that they had totally vexed her spirit and she wasn't going to stay for it. She'd be back in the morning. After she leaves, they all have a conversation. Well, Tracy, Tawanda, Trina, and the parents have a conversation. And Evelyn is along the lines of feeling like, I didn't know that if Ayanla was feeling some type of way that she could leave, but okay. So... That's when I knew that the whole commitment thing was probably going to come back up. Trina and Tawanda let the parents know that this is what normally happens. Like Tamar, Tony, they show up late and we have to fill in the gaps for them when it comes to the show and to work because people don't show up on time. This is why we can't get anything resolved. And Tawanda says we have to get to the point where we tell each other the truth, good, bad, or indifferent, and we need to be able to take it. Michael Braxton and Daddy Braxton says that that's all fine and well, but we're talking about it now and everybody's not here. And Tawanda said, our point, everybody needs to be here. So that's something that we need to work on. So that's kind of a little family conversation they have off to the side. The following day, everybody gets there on time. Tracy is extra early. Tracy looks good. As a matter of fact, everybody looked really good this episode. You know, Tony had on a see-through shirt, but... <laughs> okay, we we gonna let it rise. I guess she just you know fifty and fabulous. She's trying to get her sexy on, so nothing wrong with that. Tony looks good. I don't think it was appropriate still <laughs> for family therapy. Uh, Daddy Braxton looks like he just changed shirts. Look like the exact same outfit, different color shirt. Mama Evelyn had on a jumper again, belted but black. She looked very good. Trina looked good. She had on a black dress. Even though Tawanda was very casual with that romper on, it, it still worked. It, it was still fairly appropriate because she at least was covered and it was a nicely, um, nice print. It, it just was a nice style of jumper, not romper. I think I said um, romper, I meant to say jumper. I just love that Tracy put that blazer on. Even though it was a solid black outfit, she matured the outfit up, which is what I wanted her to do last week. Tamar... <sighs> Tamar. Tamar showed up again in her G.I. Jane, you know, warrior outfit. She was ready to do battle combat boots. She had some type of scarf in her side pocket that kept throwing me off. I think she had on cargo shorts, but the scarf in the side pocket made it look like she had on basketball shorts because it was like lime green. It looked like one of those beach towels that you get when you go out of the, go out of town and you forget your beach towel. You got to buy one from that country. It had them bright letters on it, so... That's kind of what the um, little scarf she had in her side pocket looked like. But she came ready to do battle once again. So once Tamar gets there, she looks over at Trina and says, do you want me to redo your eyelashes? And Trina was like, why? Are they falling off? And Tamar ends up just taking the eyelashes off. She was supposed to fix them, but she said they look bad. They look a mess. And I'll just say, y'all, now, I know that the way she went about it probably wasn't the best, but them eyelashes wasn't right. After <laughs> <laughs> Tamar did whatever she did to him. They did look a whole lot better. So thank you, Tamar, for that. <laughs> Iyanla walks into the eyelash putting on. Now, I thought there was going to be some drama, but Iyanla actually ends up laughing it off. And they sit down and they talk about what happened on yesterday. Iyanla is hoping to get them to understand that when you don't do what you're supposed to do, there are consequences. It's not you don't do what you're supposed to do and everybody just gets over it. There are consequences for the things that you do. She wants to discuss the consequences and how everybody felt on yesterday. Now she starts with Tony. Tony is trying to pussyfoot around the fact that she was late. She acts like she didn't know what went on. And when Ayanla asks her how she contributed, she says, well, I I'm not really sure. I, I got here at a quarter to. You contributed because he was late. Tony gets it real quick. Okay, I don't think she wanted no smoke with Ayanla. And she even says in her confessionals, Ayanla has a way of doing things and I don't want her to um, pull back. But some of the things that she says, she's very opinionated and it can be a trigger. And you can become very triggered by the things that she says, which we know that about her, right? If you watch her show, you know. So then she moves over to Tamar. Tamar is ready <laughs> to say what she has to say. She lets Ayanla know that she felt disrespected. She didn't like the things that Ayanla was saying to her. She felt singled out when she started talking about her behavior and how it diminished her message. She didn't appreciate that because she wasn't allowed to be heard. 
And she actually felt like Iyala broke her commitment because you said that everybody was going to stay to the end and then you walked out. So you broke your commitment. Iyala says, okay, well, let me make a distinction for you. When you break an agreement and the agreement was to be here at a certain time, then all bets on the commitment are off. So I didn't break my commitment. You all broke your agreement, which caused me to make the commitment null and void. It didn't matter anymore. And Tamar says, okay, so you're allowed to break your commitment, but we're not allowed to break our, our, our commitment. So you are allowed to walk off, but we're not allowed to walk off. So you said you were going to stay to the end. And I didn't break. I didn't break. She said, well, Tamar, how do you feel like you contributed to any of it? And she says, I, I didn't contribute. I, I contributed by coming in, I, I, by keeping my commitment. I contributed by showing up. And she said, so on time? No, just showing up. What time was on your call sheet? 1 30. Well, what time did you get here? She said she had no idea. Y'all, they flashback. We know Tamar got there around 3 45, 4 o'clock, which is very late. And um, Tamar says, well, she still doesn't agree that she broke any type of commitment because she did show up and she was there. Yala is trying to get her to understand, no, you come at the appointed time. That is a part of your commitment. And if you break that, then the commitment is off. And you all didn't do that. But you felt like I disrespected you. And that's not what I was trying to do. I didn't abandon you all. I let you know what was going on. So Tamar accepts it. But you can tell that it's going to come back up again later. She got quiet, but it wasn't over. I was kind of seeing Tamar's point. Like, Yella did say everybody was going to stay to the end. And she did walk out. So is that kind of abandoning the commitment? So I was kind of seeing it both ways at first. But then, like Ayanna says, let me make the distinction. I had to make the distinction for myself. And if somebody were to tell me to be at a certain place at a certain time, and y'all, I had to get myself together watching this episode because I am known for being late. But if somebody tells me to get somewhere at a certain time, then I need to be there. If I'm not there, all bets could very well be off because I didn't do what I was supposed to do on my end. It's kind of like, let's say I was married and the marriage is the commitment that I made. But inside of that marriage, there are certain agreements that we made together that would and would not go on within our marriage and what we would and would not allow. I know those agreements, but I still step, step out of the agreement by going and, you know, having a relationship with another man my husband finds out and he decides that he is going to leave me he's going to divorce me and i'm looking at him like how are you going to divorce me when i'm still here i'm still committed to the marriage yes i may have had this affair but i'm still committed to the marriage i'm still here for you i still love you why are you going to leave me i'm still within this commitment now you're not withholding your entity agreement by standing in the commitment and i'm mad at him well i can't be mad at him because i broke the commitment when i messed up the agreements okay we had an agreement i messed it up so now the commitment is broken i had to look at it from that aspect so i could really understand i still thought it was sketchy that the call times were so different i know that ayala probably has to prepare um in a different type of way than they do but i i, st I just i was confused because i thought they were cooking breakfast together so the 1 30 call time confused me anyway something that's a little bit sketchy about that but we're gonna move on Tracy says she did communicate. And Tamar is on the other end talking about lies. And I, <laughs> I know I wasn't right, y'all, but I chuckled because it just came so unexpectedly when she blurted that out. And Tracy says, no, I did communicate. Y'all know Tracy, her and Tamar can go there very quickly with each other. So she's getting riled up and saying, yes, I did communicate. Yes, I did tell you. And you're not going to do that. You're not going to disrespect me. And Ayala said, oh, okay, see, this right here is disrespectful. This right here is the disrespect. The way that you talking to her is disrespectful. And Tracy said, I'm not being disrespectful, but you're not going to talk to me any kind of way. My, you don't come for me. And then Ayala said, wait a minute, hold on. Let me help you out because you are being disrespectful. What you do is you create a boundary. And then when somebody touches that boundary, you let them know what you will not tolerate and that they cannot cross that line. That's what's wrong with this family. You guys don't create boundaries for one another. So then when somebody crosses over into it, you're getting mad, but you never created the boundary. So that was, that was a good lesson. I got to create some boundaries in my own life. So she said, Tracy, let me give you another way. Tamar, I'm sorry for allowing you to think that you could speak to me in the manner in which you're doing. And as of this day, I'm revoking that privilege. You will not speak to me that way.
Tawanda actually was trying to get Tamar to be quiet over there, but y'all know when Tamar get going, it's hard to stop her. So the boundary has now been created. Do not speak to me that way. Then Iyala moves to Mama Evelyn. Miss Evelyn, can you tell me what Tamar's pain might be? Because the only way that somebody would exhibit this type of behavior is if they were in some type of pain. Tamar is pissed again. No, 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 because she doesn't have a behavior problem. Okay, watch your words. Watch your words. She doesn't have a behavior problem. I didn't say you had a behavior problem. And that finger in my face, that's not going to work for me. But I didn't say that you had a behavior problem. I said that when you exhibit this type of behavior and Tamar is going off again, I you said I had a behavior problem. You saying all the stuff about me. That is disrespectful. You don't get to talk to me like that. And then you can't really hear what's going on because they're both talking over one another. Tamar believes that she is hypocritical and that she's condescending and that she talks over people. You don't even give her a chance to speak. You don't even hear her out. And Yanla tells her, Tamar, you are disruptive. You are volatile. You are violent, Tamar. And Tamar just does not appreciate it, does not agree. She feels like Ayala is being extra dramatic and not allowing her to be heard. Tamar's continuing to talk over there off to the side and she's continuing to carry on. And Ayala's looking at all of them while she's carrying on and saying, y'all did this. Y'all allowed this behavior. Y'all created this. And nobody's saying anything. And I can, it just made me think back to that very first season when Tamar would be going off, talking about their husbands, talking about their lives or talking about their careers or lack of. And they would all just be sitting there. They would never say anything. They'd just be sitting there listening to her mouth off. And finally, the father spoke up and said, well, I think I I contributed to this a little bit because when Tamar was little, I was passive. And when Tamar would do things, she was always able to voice her opinion. But if the other girls voiced her opinion in a way that made her upset, then I would discipline them. They would get into trouble, but Tamar would not. And that's what went on during their childhood. There's a chance that, yeah, he may have done it out of guilt because he wasn't really around um, in that way. So he, he was passive with Tamar because he felt guilty. And then she asks, Tamar, is there a chance that you exhibited certain type of things because you felt like nobody was there? Did you feel like he wasn't around? And she said, yeah, absolutely. I felt like he wasn't around. You were gone from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. You would be gone all day, every day. And that surprised Daddy Braxton. I don't know if he forgot that he was hanging out like that. <laughs> But Tamar called it out, and she said, and where was everybody else? Tamar says that everybody was gone, okay? Everybody had already left the house. Iyanla asked the rest of them, have you all ever given a thought to the fact that maybe she felt abandoned or maybe she felt like she was alone? Trina doesn't agree with that because she's only two and a half years older than Tamar, so she was kind of around, so she doesn't understand why Tamar felt alone. There was no big age disparity where she should have felt like that. And you can kind of hear the other sisters around her agreeing, and Ayanla cuts her off and says, no, 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 that's her experience. And I think that's what is a lot of the, that's what can be so difficult about family therapy is because even though you may not have actually seen it that way. The other person may really feel that way. That may have been their experience for whatever reason. That may have been their reality. And that was apparently Tamar's reality. And it, it was hard to watch because I felt like Tamar was, she was getting emotional. There were things that she wanted to say. But Iyanla, in her mind, had also pissed her off so much that she didn't really want to talk to her anymore, even though she may have been making some good points. And this is where I just want to point out that I felt like the editing was a little bit weird. I don't know if they went back and cleaned it up because you notice that Iyanla did one-on-ones with everybody, but you didn't see a one-on-one -on -one with Tamar. And I wonder if that was when she confronted Tamar or inquired with Tamar about the molestation that Tamar said she did not want to talk about and she had only told one other family member. I wonder if that was the time that Ayanla brought that up for her and so they went ahead and cut that part. But I also am wondering if that interview one-on-one -on -one happened before they recorded this part because Tamar was very, very irate and it made it look like it just came out of nowhere. But I wonder if it came from the one-on-one -on -one interview that they had already had previously. So you can tell that she wants to say a lot, but she's not going to say a lot because she's just, she's mad and she's pissed and she's stewing in it. Then Iyanla says that 
there's a chance that these type of things may have gone on and you guys have to acknowledge it because the only way that somebody would fight this hard to be seen and to be heard is if they never felt seen or heard in the first place. Well, Tamar gets riled up again. Like, okay, see, you're going to have to watch yourself. You're going to have to watch what you say. I don't want to be seen, really. I want to be seen. That's disrespectful. He is going on and going off again. And the is looking over at her like, what did I say wrong? I'm not trying to say it in a disrespectful manner. She's actually trying to help them understand Tamar a little bit I thought y'all is just like I wasn't trying to be disrespectful Miss Tamar I wasn't trying to do that yeah you were trying to be disrespectful I want to be seen and I want to be heard that's disrespectful to me that's disrespectful she said Tamar do you want to continue do you and then she kind of rolls her eyes at her and y'all I'm telling you I'm telling you I just just everything about her demeanor, y'all. She was so upset. So she's still over there getting worked up. And Yana's asking the rest of the group, like, is this what goes on? Who who gets to correct her? Who gets to say anything to her? And finally, Mama Evelyn speaks up. Wait a minute! <laughs> now, you will, rather you agree or not, you will not disrespect Yana. Because none of you were raised that way. And y'all, when I tell you, you could hear a pin drop. They wasn't saying nothing. They are scared of Miss Evelyn. And Tamar is just like, well, what about my respect? She cut her off. Oh, you, what about the word? You want to take it to the word? You want to take it to the word? She asked about the word. I don't know what Trina was about to say, but she said, I got this, Trina. Trina said, okay, mommy, I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> you respect your elders. Now, do I make myself clear? Tamar trying to say, say another word. And I got you. She said, Tamar, I know you're hurting. I know you're hurting. I can see the hurt in you. But that is what we're here for. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to resolve it. Give yourself a chance. And I love that she told Tamar that. Even though, let's be clear, y'all. Some of the reason that Tamar was going off the way that she was is because I, I felt like her and Miss Evelyn had had a conversation about this whole commitment thing. And that she was really upset about Ayanna walking off. And so was Evelyn. And she knew that our mama wasn't going to say nothing to Iyanla, so she decided to stay, say it instead. So, yeah, the conversation was very disrespectful, but, yeah, Evelyn went ahead and tried to get her together. Um, they did end up taking a break, and Tamar went to sit in the car. Iyanla was concerned that she was trying to leave, so she went out there, and she said, I'm just taking a break. I'm coming back. I'm just taking a break, so... That was good. Um, after the break, we see the one-on-one -on -one sessions. Tracy has a one-on-one, -on -one and she says she felt like a traitor to her entire family. They treated her like a traitor because she went into work. She had to pay the bills. What was she supposed to do? And Ayala says, well, that's, that's understandable that you had to do what you needed to do, but let me ask you, what is it that you like about doing this show? And she says that previously she liked how they showed family and how families work you know they're not perfect but there's a lot of love we love hard that phrase always gets me and eventually we come back together and so that's the part I like about doing the show and I wanted to honor my commitment I signed on the dotted line I don't think you up and leave in the middle of your contract so we kind of get Tracy's side but we already knew Tracy's side the only problem was just the way that she communicated that was the biggest problem Trina and Tawanda's side is we did we we had an agreement, Tamar was the first one to say something, that we had an issue with the pay, we had an issue with the way that things were going, and that we were not going to go into work that day. Tracy went into work, but she didn't really let us know. I guess it was kind of like a rushed conversation, and then they never talked about it again, and Tracy ended up showing up to work. They were taken aback, and Trina says, but I told Tracy, I'm not mad at you for what you did, but I just wish you would have communicated better. And Iyanla tells them that when you put in the butt, that's when you made her wrong. That's when you made her feel like she was wrong when you added in the butt. But let me ask you this. Why is it okay for Tamar to do Tamar and Vince and for Tony to go on tour and for Tony to do other things, but the standard doesn't apply for Tracy? And there was this long silence. And that dog on Trina, y'all, I love Trina. Trina said, touche. <laughs> touche. I don't have nothing to say because I guess they never really thought about it that way. All the fans have been saying that people that have been watching the show for a long time have said that there is a different standard set 
for Tamar and Tony. I noticed it a long time ago, especially Tony. But once we get the one on one with Tony, I think I'm starting to see why that standard is set. So let's move on to Tony's one on one. Tony's one on one was very relatable because I'm the oldest sibling. I'm several years older than uh, both my brother and my sister. So in a lot of ways, I was a surrogate parent to both of them. And I still feel like my mom has certain expectations on me to do for them or to do with them what I will. Um, she's even made mention of, you know, letting my sister live with me. I have actually let my brother live with me before. And so I do feel in a lot of ways there is a lot of responsibility on you. Uh, the difference in this case, though, is that not only was Tony the oldest, but she was the only one to be signed by Babyface and LaFace Records. They did not want the rest of her sisters at that time. And Tony felt like instead of celebrating, they saw it as a burden on the family, like the devil and the enemy is trying to attack. Y'all know how we black folk, y'all know how we do. It got to the point where the idea was since Tony was on, it was going to be Tony's job to put everybody else on in this singing world and in this career field now i saw a lot of people giving tony slack saying that she never appreciated her sisters and there was a lot of stuff that she did wrong and how dare she say she would have soared higher um if she didn't have to constantly look out for them because she could have soared higher regardless but i don't know i don't think people are really understanding the gravity of what she's saying if you're the oldest sibling then you probably know a little bit about what i'm talking about like the pressure is so real. Even when people stop putting it on you, you still feel the pressure because you still feel like they're looking at you like you're supposed to help them and you're supposed to save them and you're supposed to work with them and you're supposed to give them jobs. And it 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 just kind of, it kind of starts to feel like if I don't do this for them, are they going to cut me off as their family member? Are they not going to feel like I'm a good sibling, a good sister, if I don't do these certain things? And I started to realize how they began to let Tony slide with a lot of things because they felt like Tony had done so much for the family. So Tony gets to be put on this different standard. But where they messed up was when they put Tony on that different standard, when they allowed Tony to do certain things that they probably wouldn't accept out of their other siblings... I think it also got into Tony's head that I'm allowed to do certain things because I've been the most successful and I've helped this family out. So when y'all see Tony supposedly acting snooty and acting detached from the family, it's an environment that's been created. It's, it's not just her thinking I'm better than. It's an environment that's been created like I can do this because I have done so much. I can, you know show up at this time. I can do this. I can do that. So it's all been created. It's all been a very much established and created environment within the family. Tony ends up saying that she doesn't even really like them sometimes. And, you know, they feel like a burden. They feel like a burden to her. So that, that was sad. And it was difficult to hear. Um, Tony is very much, you can tell that she spent the most time with the dad because she's very subdued. Um, in her emotions and her feelings. And I can tell that Tamar spent the most time with Miss Evelyn because she acts, you know, she, she reacts the way that we know Miss Evelyn can react. So let me just move on to them. When Evelyn and Daddy Braxton sit down and do their one-on-one -on -one with Ayanla, Ayanla was just like, listen, I ain't trying to, you know, ruffle no feathers, but y'all too, y'all are going to have to own up to the fact that their breakdown has a lot to do with y'all's breakdown. And Miss Ayanla agreed. She knows that they had, she knows that when it came to their divorce, that the, the ladies were put in the middle of a lot of what they had going on. Even Daddy Braxton admits that they were put in the middle she asked Miss Evelyn and Daddy Braxton, do they still love each other? Miss Evelyn said, no, no, I do not love him. And I think she meant it. Um, Daddy Braxton said he still has feelings. He still has love for Miss Evelyn. And Iyana lets them know that you guys are going to have to figure out your breakdown and y'all got to clean it up so they can clean their mess up. Because the way that they react and the things that they do, they do to each other what they cannot do to you. And even Miss Evelyn said that. So that was some of Miss Evelyn's life coaching skills coming out. Because last week, we didn't see none of that, but we seeing it this week. So great, great. Good job, Miss Evelyn. I love the way that you brought it back. I do feel like those girls got dragged into that divorce a lot. Um, they were able to... Miss... Miss... 
Iyala was able to effectively point out the fact that Tamar is Miss Evelyn literally made over. She reacts a lot of the things that Evelyn feels. And Tawanda thought that was so funny in her one-on-ones because she was like, we always say that Mommy and Tamar are the same person. So, yeah, yeah, we can see a lot of that now. I don't know how I didn't see it before. When they sum up all the one-on-ones, and Yanla says at the end that she would love for Mama Evelyn and Daddy Braxton to just go to their girls and apologize and say, we're sorry, we messed you up. <laughs> we were young. They got married at 17 and 18. We were young. We were, we were each other's first loves. We loved each other. We did our best to love you. It wasn't perfect, but we tried, and we're sorry. And the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, where is Michael? And where does he fall in all of this? Like, does he feel singled out at all? Does he feel like he has a relationship with the rest of the family? I mean, he doesn't come on the show hardly at all. So I'm never really sure when it comes to Michael, but I hope that Michael is okay with everything. They sit down and they do their confessions. The confessions are based off of biblical scripture where it says to confess your sins amongst each other. I said, you better get into that word, Iyanla. All right, I know that ain't really her thing, <laughs> but you better get into that word, Miss Iyanla. So they sit down at the table and they begin to confess different things. And I, I had to write them all down. Uh, Daddy Braxton admitted that he knows that he abandoned them and he didn't give them the emotional support that they needed as their father. Um, and he says that he is sorry for that and he's confessing that. Um, Tawanda is confessing that she hasn't shared her feelings because she has been scared to hurt the feelings of her sister. So she's confessing that of her sister. So she's confessing that she also confesses that she feels judged a lot by her family when she makes decisions. So she's confessing that. Trina is a mess, as usual. Uh, she looks like she has reapplied her own eyelashes. She needs to get Tamar to do that from here on out. <laughs> and she says that she is confessing the fact that she often feels judged by her family members. But she's also confessing that there were times where she thought they were judging her when she was really judging them and that she was very, very sorry for that. You guys, I love me some Trina. I love her heart. I just love her heart. And Evelyn says that she is confessing that she drugged them in the middle of that divorce and that she was wrong for that. Um, I, I appreciated Miss Evelyn for saying that. I also am too involved in your lives and I don't need to be. That was good. That was really good. I like that, Miss Evelyn. And Tamar, not Tamar, Tony's confession was probably the most jaw dropping. She says that I confess that even though I love my family dearly, that I don't like my family. And if they weren't my family, they would not be my friends. Uh, they are, they feel like a burden. I feel brought down sometimes by my family. I mean, she was really going in and Yala was like, take a breath. She didn't even take no breath. She was very calm when she said it. I don't think she needed to. They were shocked by it. Even Trina says that, you know, I don't think Tony really meant that. If we weren't her family, we'd still be her friends. I said, Trina, believe what you want to believe. <laughs> Oh, Tracy confesses that she has been selfish at times with her own needs and hadn't thought about her sisters. Tamar's confession was the most emotional. She goes around the room and says that when I came here, I confessed that I wanted to plead my own case and I wanted to vindicate myself and be right. But she goes around the room and she apologizes and asks, asks for forgiveness. She asks her father for forgiveness. Um, she asks Tony for forgiveness for things. She asks Tracy, please forgive me for the things that I've done towards you. I, I like the resolve. I like the ending of the episode. So many things that we learned. Um, so many things that we could see differently. I'm still a little bit concerned about the editing. I, I can't really put my finger on it, but there's something. Something was a little bit sketchy, um, but it seemed like they may have come to the, some resolve. I just really hope that they're able to get their family situation right. It may be time to pull back completely from reality television. Y'all got to find another way to get y'all's money and um, try to salvage the family relationship that you all have left. I want you guys to get better. I don't want to see a family break apart in this manner because it's just so sad. But that was all I had. I hope I didn't forget too much because I know I skipped over a couple of things, but it was already lengthy. So like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.